Have you ever wondered how the plastic pollution crisis got so out of control? What if the origins of this epidemic extend further back than you realize? In this episode, we'll uncover the hidden history of plastics and how it led to the environmental catastrophe we face today. The plastic age dawned in the early 20th century with the invention of synthetic polymers that could be molded into endless consumer products. The new material was celebrated for its versatility and durability. But as plastic production skyrocketed over the decades, the sheer volume of plastic waste was beyond anything the world had seen before. By the 1960s, evidence was mounting that mass disposal of plastic waste was taking a toll on wildlife and nature. Early environmentalists sounded the alarm about the dangers of plastic pollution. Research in the 1970s confirmed that synthetic plastics were accumulating across the oceans and posed a serious threat to marine ecosystems. Their warnings went ignored by industry leaders and regulators alike. Today, over 300 million tons of new plastic is created each year, more than the entire plastic production of the 20th century combined. Half of this becomes disposable packaging, used once and thrown away. A staggering 8 million tons of plastic ends up in the ocean annually. How did we get to this point of plastic saturation and waste? Let's go back and follow the journey of a single-use plastic bottle. From its manufacturing, to purchase by a consumer, to disposal, to it becoming just another piece of trash in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. This microcosm will reveal the origins of the global plastic epidemic threatening our oceans today. Our story begins in an oil refinery that provides the raw material for most plastics, fossil fuel hydrocarbons like natural gas and crude oil. These resources are extracted from deep underground, transported via pipelines and ships, then refined in facilities that crack long hydrocarbon molecules into smaller building blocks for plastic polymers. This process releases tons of planet warming emissions, yet the world's plastic production is expected to quadruple by 2050. More and more oil will be diverted from fuel to plastic manufacturing. We are locking ourselves into a cycle of expanding plastic and petrochemical industries that pollute the air and disrupt the climate. The plastic pellets created by the refinery are transported to a product manufacturing facility. There, they are melted down and molded into a plastic bottle following a design for a beverage company's brand. This factory runs 24 hours a day, stamping out thousands of identical bottles that will soon be filled with drinks. In just a few decades, single-use plastic packaging has proliferated and replaced glass and aluminum containers. This represents a major shift towards a throwaway culture that generates enormous volumes of waste, all while extracting and consuming limited fossil fuel resources in the production process. Once molded, our bottle is transported by truck or train to a beverage plant. It's filled with a soda, capped, labeled, and ready for the store shelf. At every stop along the way, carbon emissions are released from the vehicles carrying this bottle before it even reaches the consumer. When a shopper picks this bottle off the supermarket shelf, they may pay little mind to the long, energy-intensive journey it has already been on, or the environmental impacts its production continues to incur. They finish their drink, recycle the bottle if convenient, but more likely toss it in the trash. From there, our discarded bottle travels to a waste facility. It may be incinerated, generating emissions and toxic ash, or added to a landfill where it will be entombed intact for centuries. Plastic does not biodegrade. It persists for generations. Perhaps the bottle gets blown by wind or washed by rain down storm drains out to rivers and oceans. It may join other litter on beaches that get carried out to sea by tides and waves. However it happens, the bottle ends up swirling in ocean currents halfway across the world. By now, the sun and salt water have broken this bottle into smaller fragments through photodegradation. Nutrients from rivers and fertilizers run off. Sea turtles and fish mistake the bits for food. It also absorbs and concentrates industrial chemicals and PCBs already infused in the marine environment. The bottle disintegrates into tiny particles called microplastics that fill the water column and absorb into the flesh of seafood. But it never disappears completely. 
The original carbon molecules remain circulating through the ocean, atmosphere, and living organisms. Persistent synthetic chemicals picked up by plastics transfer up the food chain to larger predators, where they can accumulate at toxic concentrations. Eventually, our bottle's remnants float into the massive vortex of trash known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. This plastic soup swirls in a loose gyre formed by currents from Asia and North America. The gyre may hold over 87,000 tons of plastic particles within an area twice the size of Texas. Here, the plastic bottle joins millions of others manufactured across decades. This is the end point after serving its one fleeting purpose. But where did this vast accumulation of plastic waste across our oceans actually originate from? When did these tremors of environmental damage from mass plastic production and consumption first register? Turns out, scientists were sounding early alarms about plastic pollution threats long before it registered as a crisis. Back in the 1950s, less than a decade into mass plastic adoption, reports emerged of birds and marine life choking on plastic debris. In the 1960s, ecologist Kenneth Mallory discovered plastic pellets contaminating New York's Long Island shorelines. He warned about plastics attracting toxic pollutants to aquatic life after observing fish starving from mistakenly eating plastic pellets. By the 1970s, plastic waste was observed entangled on coral reefs and accumulating in gyres across the Atlantic and Pacific. Off the coast of Iceland, researchers collected plastic fragments called mermaid tears shed by fishermen. Studies found microplastics infiltrating shellfish, anchovies, and shore crab larvae. In the 1980s, Fishers noted a decline in zooplankton thought to be caused by these indigestible particles filling their stomachs. Throughout these decades, a few lonely voices like Mallory tried raising the alarm. They pointed to plastics saturating the environment, releasing toxins, and pervading food webs. But the cheap, convenient new material had become too indispensable. Their warnings went largely unheeded. The plastics industry downplayed any negative impacts or funding conflicts of interest behind scientific research. They shifted blame towards consumers littering instead of corporations ramping up production. Without proper waste and recycling infrastructure, disposable plastics piled up everywhere. The profits were unprecedented, the true costs hidden. And so global plastic production ballooned from 2 million tons in 1950 to over 400 million tons today. It took the discovery of immense plastic trash vortices accumulating in the furthest reaches of our oceans to finally spark public outrage and awareness. By one estimate, 90% of all the plastic waste in the ocean has poured in within just the last 30 years. The origins of this epidemic may have been masked from public view for decades, but the consequences have finally reached our shores. The cycle only continues as more single-use plastic packaging floods the consumer economy each year. Recycling efforts cannot keep pace with the accelerating scale of plastic waste. Current solutions targeting consumer behavior avoid regulating producers. But this pollution originates from fossil fuel companies and product manufacturers, not individual consumers. We must trace the poison of plastic pollution back to its source question the true origins of this modern convenience that has left the world's oceans on the brink of catastrophe, and ask ourselves, what future are we leaving to generations inheriting this plastic-saturated planet? The disastrous impacts of mass plastic production were foretold long before we awoke to the present crisis. But it's not too late to stem the tide of plastic entering our oceans. Consumers can make eco-friendly choices and pressure companies to reduce plastic packaging. But we also need systemic change and producer accountability. Subscribe to our channel and hit the like button to join us as we continue uncovering the complete truth behind the global plastic pollution epidemic. Don't miss our next episode, where we'll dive deeper to examine the hidden impacts of plastic below the ocean's surface. The story is only just beginning. See you in episode three, Hidden Depths, The Impact Below the Surface.